I'm going to take one more question from the floor. Um, gentleman in the back with the hatch, please. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I've had a chance to meet with several of the candidates except for Mr. Topol. Uh, I've seen most of you and talked with most of you. Um, you said that my mouth was big enough. Um, I have a question. Uh, my responsibility for the, well, you talked about, I haven't heard much hope, honestly. So here, to honestly, for youth at risk, I've heard a lot of rhetoric, but little about hope. Um, 16 to 24, which is what this age bracket is, of those years, I was a homeless man. From 1978 to 2004, I was a homeless man. I worked my way back. I now work with as a preceptor with York University. Uh, I'm affiliated with York University, also affiliated now with the University of Ontario Institute of Technology, as a supervisor teaching clinical caring, proper caring. Here goes the question. So here's the question. We need to bring something down into the community that gives us more than just rhetoric. What will you do as a council at a local level and at a regional level to bring monies into the community, to bring staff into the community, to address the issues of a broken community where the most vulnerable and uh, uh, youth are? And if you look at that statistic, 92% of the youth that come in here have been sexually assaulted. That's pretty sad. And there's a lot of injuries in the hearts and minds of people. What will you do to bring the hope? and the proper uh, uh, um, services down here with properly educated people to address those issues for the homeless and the youth. John Green, uh, thank you. Uh, and you're right, we, we got to you know, get to a positive message here. And you know, we know that there are several causes of um, homelessness. I don't want to get into now. I, I've read the report. Uh, all I can say is we need to give pe young people self-esteem. We need to make sure that they're getting the proper nutrition, that their physical needs are being uh, looked after, that their emotional and mental needs are being taken care of. And that's what places like The Refuge do, does. In Ajax, they have uh, Joanne's house. Um, it's, a, I believe, 13 beds. And I think that's a model that we can follow because they also have alternative education. In other words, a lot of these ch kids you know, fall out of the traditional education system. It's just, it's not right for them. It's not the right environment. I know uh, Clarence tries to do his best in that regard, but that's where I think we can really make a difference because I said earlier about developing skills. We need to develop those skills, but sometimes we've got to look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We've got to address the basics first, and then we can get them to that next level so that they can um, feel productive, that they'll have self-esteem, that they do want to get up in the morning, and that's the things that we can do. Um, let's let's commit tonight that this is exactly what we'll do. Uh, let's make sure that we elect a council that has compassion. It's been my experience over the years that most members of council do have a great level of uh, compassion for our community. They want to see it do well. Um, I think now's the time. Bill Long. There's no doubt in my mind that we do need professionals to look after homeless youth, needy youth, and so on. And it seems to me that there are two agencies that could help with this. I'm not sure it's part of the city hall budget, but it's part of the social agency's budget, and the Ministry of Health budget, and the Board of Education looks after needy youth. And it seems to me that we could strike some kind of arrangement with these groups already involved to provide the counseling agencies and services these needy children's need. need. I uh, pointed out earlier that as an educator, I know that everything is in the mind. And it's where you start. Many of them have come back from service across uh, seas in Afghanistan. Many of them are suffering from PSTD. Uh, they, they suffer social ills. They've been trained to go across the world and engage the enemy and uh, fight for our freedom. Uh, our youth have a similar challenge that they face. They have to fight for the freedom and the, the challenges of making it through every day. One of the things that I'm trying to do with the Heroes Highway Ride is engage people and, and bring uh, military and Canadians back together that it's not separate, that they are united, and they, they serve each other. We can do the same with the youth. We, we can engage them in an opportunity and use mentoring as a great platform to build their, uh, 
esteem, build their uh, courage, and it's, it's an opportunity for them to give back to the community that helped them out. Like I said, it's not about a handout, it's about a hand up. And nobody can understand where some of our youth are coming from, except for those that have already been there. Mr. Longworth talks about his youth. Uh, we've had another uh, young lady during the video presentation talk about what she's, you know. It, it's, it's a challenge. And we can create an atmosphere where everybody can uh, mentor one another and feel safe within that, then it's a better environment for them to move forward. Excellent, thank, thank you. John Henry. There's a report that's circulated through the college and it talks about youth unemployment and the government measures youth unemployment between 15 and 25. The college's report talks about youth unemployment a little bit differently. They talk about the category 15 to 18 and then they talk about the category 19 to 25. And in 19 to 25, we're doing very well finding those jobs for the, that section of uh, youth. But for the group 15 to 18, we're having a difficult time finding a job. And that's why it's important to continue what we're doing and creating all those first, chi first chance opportunities for jobs. And we as a community, we put money into places like Durham, the Eastview Boys and Girls Club, that helps the youth of that area and all kinds of facilities, whether it's the South Oshawa Community Health Center or different places in town. But now it's, it's time for me to ask for your help. As a Rotarian, I'm really proud of the money that we put back in the community and that we raise, or whether you're the car club and you raise money for goes into Grandview, or you're in Qantas or, or Kinsman or another organization. But you've got to help us. You know, the Rotary Club of Oshawa funds 12 breakfast programs. I'm really proud that we fund 12 breakfast programs, but I'm not really proud of the fact that we have to fund breakfast programs. Or the money we put into Air Cadets. If you talk about young people and great causes, there's a great cause. All the cadet programs are free. So there's lots of opportunities for us as a city and a community to do more. But now I'm asking you to, to come out and help us. Take the time to join an organization and help raise money for them. Thank you. Rose Mary, you look like you wanted to respond. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I heard uh, Mr. Gray and Mr. Henry discuss uh, facilities in the city, um, the, um, <clears throat> sorry, the works uh, depot, Mr. Gray, you're criticizing Mr. Henry, and Mr. Henry, you're criticizing um, Mr. Gray for the arena. Uh, these projects uh, caused uh, the situation that we're in, in the city of Oshawa right now. We have a massive debt. We have a debt higher than all the municipalities in Durham Region combined. Whitby has zero debt. Um, to do a facility, and I think it's a wonderful idea, Daniel Cullen, and I really think that it's got to come from the region. The region is where social housing programs are, and they have a billion dollars in reserve, billion dollars of our money. Half our taxes go to the region. It's very, it, not discussed too much, but I think that it's got to come from people like you, inspiring the youth, getting those delegations together because it's through struggling and working together to get a goal that they appreciate it. And so it's got to come from the grassroots. I've said this before this evening. Um, I, I hope it happens. If, if I'm mayor elected on Monday, I will make sure that you have my support at Region Council. Thank you. Chris Howell. The questioner, the questioner said that he was homeless for a number of years, and all he's hearing up here is rhetoric, which means empty words. It's only empty words if we don't act on them. Everything begins with a thought and a word, but acting on them is what makes the difference. How do I convince you I'm serious about this? I said for 24 years, I've had people in my hands, injured, ill, and distressed people. It's not just a job. It's something that I drive fulfillment from by helping people who are me. I've, I've seen people go through hell, losing their homes, divorces, suicide attempts. Some have committed suicide because they, they sink so low. That has an effect on me for 24 years. You can't do this job without feeling, without hurting. And I do feel sympathy and empathy. And if I'm mayor, I will not forsake the street people and the homeless. I will act. And that you have my word on. The reality is time is winding down. I have three questions in my pocket. I see a sea of hands I want to ask, and we simply do not have time to get to all of you. And I have sincere apologies, but uh, we can't answer or ask all the questions that, otherwise we'll be here till 10 o'clock at night, which might be fine for me, but I'm not one of the people answering the questions, and that's 
it's not fair to them. So at this time, I'm going to ask the candidates to prepare their closing statements. Uh, you'll have two minutes each. If we all stick to time, it'll be 9 o'clock exactly when we're done. And I've done my job well. <laughs>